that morning was the last time I was going to leave my hotel room. I hadn't seen him up to that point. That's when I left the hotel room, bought a copy of the catcher in the line, signed it to hold the coffee, the front hold the coffee, and wrote that in the back. This is my statement. Walk uh, briskly up Central Park West to 72nd Street, and again, milling around there with the transit for there, Jim and Jerry. I was uh, leaning against a guard royal started railing. And I was looking down, I was reading the catch and the I believe he got into the taxi. And disappeared. Later that day, we came back and uh, we struck up a conversation about John. And at one point during the day, John came back out. He was obviously back in the building and doing uh, an arcade radio. And he came out of the building. And the photographer that I mentioned earlier, she kind of pushed me forward and said, here's your chance, and you've been waiting all day, having to sign an album. When I was very nervous, I was right in front of John Lennon and instantly, I had a black pen, and I said, John, would you sign my album? And he said, sure. Yoko went and got to the car, and he pushed the button on the pen, started to get it to ride. And he wrote his name, John Lennon, and the number looked back in 1980. He looked at me, he said, he said, oh, do you want anything else? 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 And I felt that the band had now here. He knew something subconsciously that he was looking into the eyes of the person. So he's a busy man, a busy man. He's going to go to the record studio. He's talking to a nobody to sign an album for nobody. A nobody to sign an album for nobody. A nobody to sign an album for nobody. He's asking me, is that all I want? I mean, he's giving me the autograph. I don't have a camera on me. What could I do then? I stand around like an idiot waiting for him to come back. He came back about 10 to 11 at night. They were trying to get him to stay. There were those that felt that I wanted him to shoot pictures of the shooting. It's not true. I don't want him out of there. There was a great part of me that didn't want to be there. I asked Judy, the fan, before she left for a date that night. She said no. If she had said yes, I would have been on the date with her. She said no. I was sitting at the inside of the arch. It was dark. It was windy. I was there. The doorman was out uh, along the sidewalk. I was at an angle where I could see a limousine pull up. There's probably hundreds of limousines that turn up. Uh, but I knew that was his. And I stood up. The limousine pulled up. The door opened. The rear left door opened. The door got out. John was far behind, say 20 feet, he got out. I nodded to the other one too long time. John came out, he looked at me, and, and I think he recognized me. Oh, here's the fellow that I signed out earlier. He walked past me. I took five steps toward the street, turned, withdrew my charter arms, 38. Jose the Dorman came over, 
where he was crying. And he was grabbing my arm and shaking my arm. And he shook the gun right out of my hand. It was a very brave thing to do. And he kicked the gun across the pavement. So I was stunned. I didn't know what to do. I took a catch of the right out of my pocket. I tried to read it. I just couldn't wait until the police got there. Until the police got there. Until the police got there. I was just devastated. I was just.